kind of have to go through it together and not, hey, I'm the man of the house and I'm going to get through <laughs> this without crying or whatever. Welcome back to Chasing Rainbows. We are talking about National Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. This is part two of a two-part series. So if you missed part one, in last week's video, we shared exciting news that we opened our own store full of products that are for miscarriage, infertility, and beyond. Also, we launched a whole new line just in time for National Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness, so you can find products for your angel baby and even have products custom made with your angel baby's name on it. Also, we shared answers to questions that pertain to our own pregnancy loss story. So we are going to pick up right where we left off right now. Here we go. Sometimes, life's biggest storms give you the most beautiful rainbows. We are Chasing Rainbows. Okay, your turn. What was our most memorable balloon release yet? What happened that makes this one stand out to you? Mm. Um, oh boy. <laughs> If you know anything about us, when we celebrate the birthdays of these kids, <laughs> what will go wrong does go wrong, and it gets crazy, and or it comical. all creates <laughs> memories that are just amazing. It's kind of hard to pick one, but I would have to say my favorite one that just made us die laughing was when we released the balloon at a park and the wind took it almost into the administrative building. <laughs> Sammy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and My technically you're not supposed to release balloons where we were because it's pretty close to an airport. <laughs> and we thought about that after we let it go. <laughs> and the balloon didn't seem like it wanted to go up. It just hovered. And it was a big giant Elmo balloon. Yeah. <laughs> there was some noxious and, and there was snow. And our daughter Jayla was like mortified. <laughs> so there you go. That was hilarious. That was, I think, the most memorable right now. There was like a foot of snow that we were walking in. So we were literally like the only ones there. I saw one other person. So it was kind of obvious who the balloon belonged to. <laughs> and we had all this white snow with a bright red balloon. That was pretty, yeah. Jayla now called that one our, our jokester, our prankster, and Jackson is our naughty child. <laughs> she says Paisley Grace is just like her because she named her. I don't know if that's a good thing. Oh. She's kind of naughty too, Jayla. Yeah. <laughs> Not naughty, strong-willed. All right, I keep picking peek. I'll pick you. What is the best advice you could give for a, for a man or for a woman who just lost their baby? Maybe you take the man part and I'll take the woman part. How about that? Divide okay. this question. I would say the best, well, no, I'll do both. You do both. I have a reason, because um, I would say for a man, and I'm saying this because I think because of what you said earlier about like supporting me right off the bat. I know a lot of women out there are thinking something that they want something totally different from how men normally respond. So if you are a man and your wife just lost your baby, I would say she wants you to grieve with her. She wants you to Tell her how you feel. She, she doesn't want to feel like she's grieving alone. So it's good to like support her and I get that like you feel like you want to pause your emotions or whatever to be there for her. But I would say try to do the opposite as hard as it may be and actually walk through the grief together versus at different times. 
and for a woman who just lost their ba her baby, um, tell people. Find other people who have been through the same thing. And I say that with caution because there are going to be people who respond in unkind ways because they haven't been through it before. But if you find somebody who has, most likely they're going to understand it. At least have a better understanding than somebody else. Everybody grieves differently and some people I've found that I've talked to, several different people that have had miscarriages, some it impacts way more than other people. Um, I think it also makes a difference on if they've had a baby after having had the miscarriage versus they had a miscarriage and had a miscarriage, had a miscarriage and no kids after that. I think it brings a different perspective. Um, I think the person that's had the baby after has a more hope-filled response of good things are going to come later, but there's really no guarantee of that for everybody. And for those of you who have experienced multiple losses, you know that. So, but I would definitely say don't try to go through it alone. Um, that's why you should go check out umbrellaofsupport.com and find somebody that relates closely to what you're walking through. Everybody has different stories. Find somebody you can connect with and reach out. Don't isolate. Your turn. Um, I would say for the male perspective, um, definitely be there for your spouse. Um, support her. But I think I've learned now that kind of like she said, you kind of have to go through it together and not, hey, I'm the man of the house and I'm going to get through <laughs> this without crying or whatever. Shed those tears with each other. I think it helps. Mm -hmm. um, for the women's perspective, um, I don't know if I can answer that. I, I just don't know because I can't be in, I, I guess this is more on the man's perspective too. We're never gonna feel what they feel over this. Mm -hmm. So you have to be understanding and understand that like moods are gonna change, attitudes are gonna change, anger's gonna be there. Like it's gonna be a roller coaster. And I think women definitely share those feelings with your spouse, but men, like, be willing to deal with it. I mean, that's, that's kind of being a part of the relationship, is just dealing with it together and working your ways through each other's. So go to a counselor if you need to. We've done that. We went to counseling for a long time after this to talk through things. Um, it helps. It really does to have. Um, sometimes you need somebody to like guide the conversation. Yeah. Whereas you might not know what to for say sure. if you're just on your own. So. It's my turn. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to steal your turn. Story I just of don't, my life. don't remember. All right. What is the best thing that someone could do or say for the mother or father or siblings after a loss? Mm. I think, I think the biggest thing is to say just I'm there for you. If you need anything, like call me, text me, something, and actually being there for that person. Because um, some people will say that out of politeness, but they don't really mean it. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna just like drop everything and come over to let you cry on their shoulder. They're just not gonna do it. I think the best support is, is you know, hey, it's your timing when you want to talk about it, but I'm going to be there if you need to talk about it sooner or later. I would piggyback and say uh, 
to add on to that is say it, offer it, but also do it because most likely people are also going to respond with politeness and not tell you they need something. So drop off flowers at their door with a card or or give them something with their baby's name on it. Ask that question. Did you choose to name your baby? Most people want to talk about the kids that they lost and usually people feel uncomfortable or afraid to bring up the subject. I would say don't be. Don't be afraid to bring it up. They want to talk about it. They need to talk about it. It's healthy. It's part of the grieving process. Just like if you lose your mom, brother, sister, grandma, and they pass away, you don't want to be left alone with it. You want to talk about them and you want their memory to live on. You want other people to remember. That's probably the biggest fear of any mother is that everyone forgets. And as time goes on, they not only forget about your baby, but they forget that you're still grieving. Grief doesn't just go away. You grow with it and it changes and it kind of just stays with you and I don't know, it's not the same as when it first happens, but you don't ever forget the baby that you lost or babies you lost. And I would say specifically for siblings, I think they're often overlooked a lot. And my, my sweet friend actually gave our daughter, and well, she meant it for either me or Jayla, but Jayla very much claimed it, this little pink elephant that had Paisley's name on it. And that meant so much to her. She sleeps with that elephant every night. It stays in her room, and she just doesn't let it go. So, yeah, I think that's important to not forget the sibling. Or understand that they may not respond in a normal, responsible, like, not responsible, that's the wrong word, a normal way you would expect someone to breathe. Jayla responded in sheer anger and, like, it go from, like, total anger outburst over little things to just crying randomly we had no clue what was going on and we kind of put two and two together like oh this has nothing to do with this yeah yeah so all right what is the number one thing you wish people who have not experienced a loss like this knew or understood ah <sighs> i wish that they knew that it was like losing anyone loved one I had so many people respond to me less than if my goldfish had died <laughs> they don't care they don't get it they don't respond with sympathy or empathy or a lot of people it's like okay no big deal like or why are you telling me this kind of thing like it's something you shouldn't talk about when it is something you should talk about it's a big life-changing event and it's a loss of hopes dreams and your forever that you wanted with this child and it's gone in an instant and it's devastating so, and i also wish people knew that you just don't get over it you don't ever get over it you will never get over losing your baby you'll always wish they were there you will always wish or wonder like how old would they have been right now? What would we have been doing? Or it just doesn't go away. No. So I guess I wish that people would understand that one, it's really hard and you're hurting and you need somebody to be there for you and listen. You don't have to understand but listen. I think it's probably the biggest thing. Be a friend. If somebody else is sad, you don't have to understand why they're sad, but be there for them. And I think the other thing is, is that there are going to be bad days. Mm -hmm. There are going to be days mm -hmm. where you think about it and it, you're down. Mm -hmm. um, and that's okay to have. I think that's the biggest thing that people need to understand. You may not call them one day because you just don't feel like it. Or go out with them more. Yeah. I had problems even wanting to take family photos because I was upset my whole family wasn't there. It was just, it's different. It, it changes how you see things afterwards. So, is it your turn or mine? Mine. I 
what miscarriage was the hardest for you and why? Um, I think hands down it was Paisley. Um, Paisley was by far the hardest for me because we had so much build up and excitement and it was all there. The other ones just didn't, not that they didn't feel exciting, they were, but like, I think I had a bigger part in Paisley's mm -hmm. and it wasn't just on you. It yeah. was on the whole family. So that was definitely harder to tell Jayla and like announce it to the world. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that, you should, but it definitely was just a little harder for me. Do you think it was because of the length of time or because of we did tell everybody? I think it was because emotionally, I think I was more attached. Oh, this is for you. I can't answer this one. Bye. Wow. I'm the winner. This question is, is, what were you really thinking when I originally told you I wanted a reborn doll? Um, what do you think now and has it helped? Um, Initially, you can be honest. Boy, it's fine. I'm sure there was a little bit of you want what and why. Initially, I was I I had a little sticker shock. Um, <laughs> they aren't cheap. <laughs> I was like, why is she spending like five hundred dollars on a doll? Um, because American Girl dolls are a hundred, and <laughs> that's about the same thing. Um, that was my initial thought, but when she started to show me this doll, it like really shocked me because, um, besides the fact that it, I, I do think it has helped her, it's a piece of art. Like people that really care that are doing it the right way and not scamming people. Um, do I think it helped? Oh hands down. I think it helped a lot. I think it helped maybe even both of us actually. Um, I at one point couldn't even go in the room. Couldn't even look at it. You mean Paisley's room? Yeah, Paisley's yeah. room. Um, and now I'm more okay with it. I, I can even, if she wants me to hold her for a little bit, I'll hold her for a little bit. Um, I think it's helped me kind of do that grieving process too. A little bit so um, yeah I think it, it helped both of us in a way well we kept the door closed 24 7 after losing her and now now the door stays open which lets light in and it just feels more hopeful like she's keeping us from turning it into a guest room or something else right it's, um, it's a placeholder like, yeah that is all our questions Hopefully you enjoy that. Ah, hopefully it helped you in some way, shape or form. Oh, sorry, I gotta move. I can't, I can't keep sitting I'm that way. I'm sliding down the hill. <laughs> we didn't realize how hilly this was, you think when we picked this spot. But hopefully you enjoy that. Hopefully it helped you because I think hearing from other people, especially hearing your perspective, I appreciate it each time you sit and you share with me because I know a lot of other channels out there, there's lots of us women that are speaking, but not as many men speaking up about miscarriages and infertility and all that stuff. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. All right. I think we're going to close out there definitely make sure to subscribe you're not going to want to miss the next video for sure so head over to instagram we do occasionally offer some discounts on the products and merchandise that we sell yeah so definitely check out chasing rainbows store if you haven't checked out rising up you gotta go watch it 
Oh, now I feel sick. <laughs> For so many reasons, half the concussion, half the fumes. Oh dear God. This thing stinks. <laughs> I don't want it to go look splotchy. I know what I'm doing. Sure you do. Factoid number one. Ooh. One. 70% of the Louisville Zoo oh, you know is what? over the underground. Mm. Alert the zoo, a baboon has escaped. I was gonna say they let the ape out. <laughs> He's funny. So me and my dad are having a water war right now. So see how this goes. What you doing, dear? Hunting. <laughs> uh oh. All of our our humorous funny side of life. This is more the serious side of things, but rising up is total comedy hour. Yeah. I do love that. But <laughs> I'll probably come back on and talk to you more about a life update of everything else when I have time and I'm feeling a little bit better. This is like like I said the or I don't know if I said it. Like one of the first times I've gone out because I have felt so bad with the concussion. Once once COVID ended, that got really bad. And if you didn't know that we all had COVID, then you definitely need to go back and watch this other playlist. So, subscribe, stick around, and we will see you next time. Till then, we look forward to chasing more rainbows with you. Bye-bye. Bye. We actually wanted to do something. Shall we? Shall I stop? Yeah. What are you doing? I got something in my mouth and it won't go away. <laughs> it's having issues. Sorry. Um, I cannot talk. I feel like I'm like struggling to get all my words out. It's bad. Fill in my blanks. <laughs> Correct me if I say gibberish, please. <laughs> oh, the bloopers are going to be bad. <sighs> yeah. All right. Um, what was our most memorable b balloon race? <laughs> Blooper. <laughs> Welcome to fall in Ohio. Where the leaves just blow off the trees before they change colors. <laughs> Thanks for watching today's video. Before you leave, make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. This tells YouTube to share this with others who need it just like you. Also be sure to follow us over on Instagram and check out the link for my family's channel in the description. Also in the description, you will find link to our, our store, Chasing Rainbows, which has products for miscarriage, infertility, and beyond. If you're interested in having a custom made product, like one with your angel baby's name on it, then send us a DM over at Chasing Rainbows underscore store, and we will send you a custom link with full line of products just for you, no obligation to buy. Otherwise, check out our ready-made lines right now. And be sure to visit UmbrellaOfSupport.com for all resources pertaining to miscarriage, stillbirth, child loss, infertility, special needs children, adoption, and foster care. Remember that life is done better in community. Check back for more videos, and I look forward to chasing more rainbows with you.